Figure 4 shows a sketch of part of the curve C with the equation y equals x squared ln x over 3 minus 2x plus 4, where x is greater than 0. The finite region S shown shaded in figure 4 is bounded by the curve, the x-axis and the lines with x equals 1 and 3. Part A. Complete the table below with the value of y corresponding to x equals 2. Give your answer to four decimal places. So we're going to substitute 2 into our function. So we're going to do 2 squared times ln2 divided by 3 minus 2 times 2 plus 4. If we substitute that in, we get 0.9242 to four decimal places. So that's the answer to part A. Part B. Use the trapezium rule with all of the values of y in the completed table to obtain an estimate for the area of S, giving your answer to three decimal places. So the trapezium rule is a half h of the first value plus the last value plus two lots of everything in between. In this case here, the h is 0 0.5. We can see that we are going up in 0 0.5s here. Each strip would be 0 0.5 wide. Our first value is 2. Our last value is 1.2958. And then we've got two lots of everything on the inside here. So two lots of the 1.304 two lots of the 0.9242 and two lots of the 0.9089. Typing that into my calculator, I find to three decimal places that the area is 2.393. So that's my answer for part B. Part C. Use calculus to find the exact area of S. Give your answer in the form A over B plus ln C, where A, B and C are integers. So, to find the area of S using calculus, I would integrate between 1 and 3 of my function. Now... To help me integrate, I'm going to write this x squared ln x over 3. I'm going to write that as 1 third x squared ln x minus the 2x plus 4. So hopefully you can see that this is the same thing as this. Just writing it like that makes it a little bit easier for me to integrate. Now, in order to integrate this term here, I'm going to have to use by parts. These other terms are going to integrate easily, but to integrate the x squared ln x, I'm definitely going to need to use by parts for that because it's a product of two functions. So just separately on the side over here, let's do that. Let's let u equal ln x because we always have u as ln x. And we'll have v dash as x squared. That way u dash would be 1 over x, differentiating the ln x, and v would be 1 third x cubed, just integrating the x squared. Using the biparts formula now then, we've got u v, so u v, that's my u v there, these two times together, minus the integral of u dash times v. Now we can see that the u dash times v is going to simplify. This 1 over x here is going to cancel with one of those squared terms, or one of the x uh, cubes terms to turn it into an x squared. Right, I'm then going to take this one third outside 
and we're just left with the integral of x squared. The integral of x squared is, uh, this is going to integrate to be 1 third x cubed, which when times by the 1 third will be 1 ninth x cubed. So this is the integral of this. So let me write down s equals, we've got one third of the one third x cubed ln x minus one ninth x cubed. So let me use curly brackets here. Integrating the minus 2x will just be minus x squared. And integrating the 4 will be 4x. And my limits are 3 and 1. Right. Let me just expand those brackets to the front there then. So we've got the 1 ninth x cubed and uh, x minus 1 over 27 x cubed minus the x squared plus 4x substituting the 3 inside here then so we've got 1 ninth times 3 cubed times ln 3 so that will simplify to be 3 ln 3 Minus 1 over 27 times 3 cubed, which is just 1. Minus 3 squared, plus 4 times 3. Oops. So that's substituting the 3 in. Now substituting the 1 in. The 1 ninth times 1 cubed times ln 1 will be 0. The minus 1 over 27 times 1 cubed will be minus 1 over 27. Minus the 1 squared plus the 4 times 1. Simplifying this, we get 3 ln 3. Uh, we've got plus 2. We've then got a plus 1 over 27, a plus 1 and a minus 4. So all of those terms there are going to simplify to be minus 26 over 27. And just comparing this to how I needed to write the answer, we can see I've got my a over b. That's the minus 26 over 27. But I, I can't have this coefficient in terms of the in front of the ln. I just need to have ln c. So I'm going to take this 3 and put it as a power there. 3 to the power of 3, 3 cubed is 27. So this is my answer to part C. This is the exact area of S. Part D. Calculate the percentage error in your answer to part B. Um, and so calculate the percentage error in using your answer to part B to estimate the area of S. So percentage error is oops, the actual real answer minus your approximation divided by the actual times 100. So we just worked out our actual answer. It was ln 27 minus 26 over 27. That's the actual exact answer. The approximation that we worked out in part B was 2.393. Divided by the actual answer, so ln 27 minus 26 over 27. 
and times that by 100 to turn it into a percentage and we get 2.6%. So that is the percentage error to one decimal place. And then finally, part E, explain how the trapezium rule could be used to obtain a more accurate estimate for the area of S. Well, we could use more strips. Use more strips. By using more strips, that would reduce the error. It would reduce the uh, difference between the curve and the tops of our trapeziums. So it would increase the accuracy.